Live from San Francisco, it's theCUBE. Covering Red Hat Summit 2016. Brought to you by Red Hat. Now, here are your hosts, Stu Miniman and Brian Gracely. Welcome back, happy to have on the program a CIO and Innovation Award winner here at Red Hat Summit, uh, Kirsi Tawadia, who's the CIO of the Bombay Stock Exchange. Hey, good uh, thank you for making the long trip and uh, welcome to theCUBE. Thank you very much. All right. Happy to be here. So uh, we read uh, Innovation Award winners, I mean, you know, you know, tens of thousands of people, you know, so many people using Red Hat. Um, you guys are in the uh, infrastructure state, so can, can you tell us a little bit about obviously stock exchange? I mean, I know that it's, you know, you know high frequency trading and, you know, latency is super important. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, I think of, you know, proprietary hardware and lots of gear and, you know, networking there. So t tell us a little bit about your uh, infrastructure environment before and after, if you would. So, Prior to moving to the open source, we were working proprietarily, uh, mostly on the proprietary hardware. We were working on non-stop technologies. So everything was proprietary, right from the hardware, the OS, the application that we developed, and any other supporting system that we need had to be proprietary. So there was nothing open to it. So we were running a challenge of uh, making actually the high frequency and the speed and the agility what we wanted to change. That was a basic limitation that we were, and, and we kept on innovating over there Though we came from, say, we were earlier were giving a response over 300 milliseconds, we came to a level where we came down to 10 milliseconds. But beyond a point, we thought that this hardware is not giving us enough power that we wanted, and our capacity was also, we were able to run only, say, uh, 10 million orders per day. Okay, and that, and when we were doing 10 million orders, our hardware capacity was reaching to 90%. Wow. So, so beyond a point, we thought, let's, there was no point in upgrading the hardware because if we continue with the same architecture, next two years we'll again have the same problem. So we had to think about radically different of changing the entire architecture of the entire system. So we actually did, we split about, the, everything was in a monolithic uh, architecture previously. So we actually did the, all our peripheral systems which are there. We first took out component by component from the, open, from the main thing. We started putting it on a simple x86 systems. So we developed the entire periphery systems to an exchange. Like you know, in an exchange, you have the clearing system, the risk management system, the market data feed systems. There are a lot of other systems which are there which requires matching engine is the heart. So what we did is first we created all the ancillaries around it, and the finally we replaced the heart. So when we replaced the heart, we took a, a open source, we went on and entire the Red Hat stack. So we, and our software was given by Deutsche Börse. So we took their software, we took the Red Hat, and totally on an x86 box, and we integrated the whole thing. And basically using our APIs, so particularly what we profess as the microservices, we, instead of calling microservices, we actually had micro applications developed and connected everything through an API. So now we run almost 400 million orders a day with 10% of the capacity of the system utilization. So we are still around 90% headroom available. Wow. So, so that's, it's a, I mean, 40x growth in the, you know, yeah, kind of your throughput there. Throughput, the, and our latencies have come to six microseconds. Okay, wow. so our acknowledgement. Wow. Can, can, can you bring us into, you know, what, what was the board discussion? I mean, this is, you know, what you run your business on. You know, I mean, it has to work. It's, uh, you know, has to be reliable. And, you know, of course, prices, it, it, usually price is almost thrown out the door usually when you think about that because. Not really. We are very, very cost conscious. <laughs> BAC is very cost conscious because we had to be agile, smart, and we had to spend our money smartly. So it was not that we had to so through our money, money was there, but we wanted to do intelligent investments. And uh, we have almost uh, saved the money because the amount of money used to pay to the EMCs for all this proprietary infrastructure. In the same kind of cost, we have got the entire new hardware with three-year warranty. So that is the kind of savings that we have done. So not only on the trading side, even on our big data uh, engine, we used Hadoop as our basic platform for our big data. And there also we have gone to 500 terabytes worth of data, completely working on commodity hardwares and totally open source and it's totally free for us. And we are the largest exchange we actually made is live warehouse, big data, working on an open source. Most people are still trying it out or using this as more of an educational or research institute. Being a financial institute, I think I'm quite proud to say that we have been gone live, one of the first in India who have gone live at such a large scale. 
Yeah. What, what do you tell your fellow CIOs? What advice would you give them? You know, a lot of them are saying, hey, we run critical applications just like you. Uh, but, but that kind of change is, is significant. It, you know, it, the buck falls to you. What, what sort of advice do you give them? What's the thought process around going through that big a change, a big architecture uh, <coughs> modification? I, I might uh, advise is just uh, believe in yourself. Like, you, know, you need to believe that open source works. I mean, that's the biggest, it's a mindset issue rather than a technology challenge, I would say. And uh, when somebody else is successful, yes, you make a leader's role, you set a path for others to follow, and I hope people will learn from our experience and follow the footsteps and, and uh, they will come up. Because now people were waiting for somebody to be showing that it is, it is successful, it, you can make it successful. I think BAC is a thought leader in most of these open source areas in India, and we are leading, and in a lot of areas we are leading on the open source. I mean, yeah. We're doing a lot of innovations over there. Right. Yeah. So, Kirsten, is BSE a contributor to, to, to open source? Very little, because right now, we have just come into open source, maybe just two years back, but within two years, we have done a, we have covered a lot of road, and a lot of success stories have been coming in. So we are still learning, so once we start, we'll start contributing also. It's okay. absolutely no, second thought about it. Yeah, c c can you give us any insight into just India in general as to kind of the acceptance of open source and contribution? See, right now, uh, the acceptance is a challenge. So only once it gets freely accepted, then people will start contributing also. So right now, the mindset is a little skewed in the sense people think open source is free, open source is unstable, open source is for learners, it's for labs, not for production. Whereas here we are saying we are running a stock exchange, which is mission critical for the country, and it's considered one of the country's most critical infrastructure. And we, if we can run the country's most critical infrastructure on open source technologies, any other person can run that in open source. So I think BAC has gone and set up, and now it's slowly it's catching up. People are looking at us as role models, as examples to be setting up within the country, and it's happening. Yeah. You, you talked a lot about the technology change. What about the, the people side? How much did your team have to change over the last couple of years? What new skills did you have to integrate? See, uh, learning open source was not very difficult because our, most of our uh, uh, support that we got from our partners and specifically we had, uh, we had a strong domain knowledge because stock exchange is a very, very strong domain. So techies are usually very fast in learning technologies but not the domain. Mm -hmm. And uh, so what, basically what we did is we rescaled all our guys who were there on the old platform. We just trained them on the open source and uh, they are doing quite well. Because bringing in a new, totally new uh, talent from outside and working in a domain was a difficult choice. So we chose the other way around. We just reskilled everybody who was there. And it was a motivation for them also learning something new, getting onto a new platform, getting more agile. So I think it's got, got very well in the organization. Right. Kirsi, I want to give you the final word. Uh, yeah, give, give us your thoughts as you know, attending Red Hat Summit, you know, being an Innovation Award winner. I think it was a very good experience. This is my first event. Like I said, we've come into Red Hat just a couple of years back as an organization. And it really feels good and it's happy to be getting honored. I'm feeling very happy that we, we came in so fast and we never expected that our work would be recognized in such a large scale. So this recognition has given us even more confidence that even we can do even much better and we can really contribute now, and we are feeling very proud to be associated with Red Hat. Thank you very much. All right, well thank you so much for sharing your story, and uh, congrats to BSC on being an, an Innovation Award winner. We'll be back with lots more coverage here from Red Hat Summit 2016. You're watching theCUBE. All right, hello. Uh, my name is Stephen Keating, and it, this is August 18th, uh, around 6 p.m., and I 